So you want to learn how to do an epoxy overlay to hide like, you know, some crack in a table. Don't just use resin and expect the crack to hold. You got to use the adhesive. Keep watching. I'll show you that. I'm going to show you how to use basic pipe clamps, C clamps, two by fours, just to get you started so you can make some money. Now, when you make profit, go buy some of the tools you'll see. You'll see I got stone tools, concrete levelers, just buy a little at a time. Our next video is going to be wild. We're doing a lava cigar lounge with you know, got to make the top look like it's molten lava, like red with black. We're doing concrete. We're using avonite, resin, woodwork. But uh, I'm also going to show you about business. But I'm going to be fully explaining things. So that's why the videos are going to take a little time. Okay? Be patient with me. But listen to all the stuff I'm typing in this video. Practice. I don't care if you watch a video tape. You really got to do. Spin by a granite yard in your neighborhood. You know, take some sink cutouts, smash them, try to seam it up. I'm going to go over and over about you practicing. Because I don't care if you watch videos on airbrushing. I don't care if you read books on airbrushing. If you do, read a book on airbrushing and watch videos on airbrushing. Please, do not even think about going to some guy named Bubba and doing some air brush on his $50,000 motorcycle, okay? You'll have a nose like me. I stood up when I should have shut up, all right? And I don't want that to happen. But if you read that book, watch these videos, but actually do, and then ask questions in the comments to find out answers that maybe you missed in the video or maybe people like me and Tommy didn't get to say it to you we just assumed you knew but most importantly I hope you are not wanting to learn resin just so you can make little meditation type things for Instagram for likes I want you to make money okay I want you to do this as a business I made lots of mistakes and now I'm ready to share it stay connected to our page I hope you don't hate me right now going on and on about fixing the cross grain seam. If I didn't want to fix it, why'd I fix it? I wanted the challenge and I knew I could fix it with the epoxy overlay. The reason I'm showing you taking dust from the bottom because a lot of times it's hard to match the color of the granite, the color of the quartz, the color of the marble in this case. So I take from that. It also puts a grit in the glue when you're structurally seaming it. Okay? It's also a little bit brighter on purpose. Test with alcohol. Even if I wasn't using epoxy, I'd have to put sealer over it. Sometimes when you put sealer over it, your perfect seam that was dry looks awesome. And then it darkens up. And you're like, mm. wish I would have made it a little lighter so you could tone it down. That's why I did that. Do that too. You can do this with many colors. I just want you to learn how to match materials because if you could match another material, a tile, or another countertop, all the other colors you could do no problem. Anybody, not anybody, but a lot of people can make their own creation and say, I've done that. That's easy. But if they have to match something, they might freak out. Ask me how I know that. I know that. So I learned how to match things first and then everything else just fell into place. And I want that to happen for you. And I'm also going to teach you about how to sell this. I do not want you to be afraid to tell a customer, well, what's your budget? When they say, I want a bar top to look like that sample you just made. What's your budget? Well, I don't know. I was like, well, then get back to me when you know. And then in time, you're going to learn how to do blues, 
match colors like what I did was I would get a piece of copper I would get some weird tile and see if I could duplicate that so I don't end up selling it to a customer that says can you match this can you match that and now I could say yeah but what's your definition of match if you want something to look exactly like marble just go buy marble you want something to look exactly like copper just go buy copper but some people like the look so you have to make a 20 foot bar to match that then get, 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 get a good conversation going with your customer will you don't be afraid to ask them what's their budget because their budget might be like fifty dollars and say no I, I know I can't do that and then guess what you can barter because you're starting out in business they might be an accountant hey you could like say, hey, if you do some work for me, keep my books, I'll do this for you. Hey, there might be a lawyer for contracts and things like that. Anything you need, you could barter these days. I still haven't been able to found a tool supplier though that I could make countertops for or anything though. So that's the things you have to buy, but you'll do good. And I, but it's all about practice.
And by the way, I did this for you because it's apparently I lost the footage of the top where I did the whole top. So I'm showing you the two white lines. I'm sticking right in between the mending plates just to show you. I actually flipped this customer's top over just to show you a lesson to prove to you that I can redo it. That's why I did it right in between the mending plates. Yo! Get this fire out of here. I'm trying to teach this friend I haven't met yet how to do work. These editor guys with this fiery stuff. Can someone put out the fire, please? Okay, back to you. So again, if someone approaches you with this table that's broken, ask them what their budget is. They say, I don't know, $50? We don't know what it'll cost. Then you could decide if you want to do it for that. I don't know. It might be worth it. Who are they? Is it going in a restaurant where a lot of people might see it? Or is it going in the personal house? Then only they see it. What is it they do for a living? They already know what you do. Do you know what they do? Maybe they're an accountant. Ah, then they could do some books for you. And instead of taking like $200, you might get $1,000 worth of bookkeeping from them. They might be a lawyer. They could help you with contracts, how to write it. Because when contracts come down, it's all about the black part that's in a contract. Not what you said or what you meant. It's about the black part. And they could probably teach you that part of business. Okay, maybe you might even find a stone supplier that could give you tools. They're real hard to find. I still haven't found one yet to help me with that. So you're going to have to spend some money. Keep that in mind. The minute you make profit, roll that back. Buy a little tool at a time so you don't feel the sting. Before you know it, you're going to get so much attention knowing that you can do something different than what you know, a lot of the off-the-shelf products are out there. Someone can have in their house, their business. But I want you to keep practicing and have all these samples that look good. Then you start building up a little baby showroom. Put it in a toolkit. You go visit them. Hey, do you want seashells? Do you want, I don't know, whatever it is you find. I threw money in tops. I, there's so much stuff I put in epoxy. And that'll help you, okay? And then get your pricing right. Okay, add up everything. How much does the mold cost? Your time is going to, you're going to get faster. So think on that too. Don't get too hung up and I want $50 an hour and that's it. Things that took me an hour to do uh, many years ago, 10 years ago, since I started messing with epoxy or probably 15 years ago, I could do way faster now. That's what I'm saying. So it's going to be hard to... Uh, have a rigid price like that, okay?
Understanding drizzling why I don't pour because I don't want a fat line on top of my product that's why you can use the edge of the stick or the wideness of the stick but then stop and wait don't be going crazy like I used to do and then see what it looks like and you always got your base you saved in a little cup so then you can put some lighter colors in between to try to cover it up to see if it gets dark in one spot, if it gets light, if you accidentally, like I'm a little messy here, I see me putting drops on it. And just always go with that flow, go with that grain so it blends in, okay? Then in time, you're going to learn how to do blues, match colors. Like what I did was I would get a piece of copper. I would get some weird tile and see if I could duplicate that. So I don't end up selling it to a customer that says, can you match this? Can you match that? And now I could say, yeah. Make the samples, throw glass in it, throw seashells in it. And when you throw seashells in it from the beach, there's salt on them. It'll come up and ruin your epoxy. So make sure you clean them, okay? You could also make 3D sculpts. You can make a fist. Um, I did that for a friend of mine and then laid up. I just went to buy a whole, one of them Hulk gloves and reduplicated and filled it up, put some shotgun shells for the knuckles, and he loved it. So practice 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 and then you'll feel so confident how to sell but again don't feel embarrassed to ask customers what's their budget most of them are say i don't know and they want you to spend all this time figuring it out spending like a night measuring and all this stuff and then you find out they only they have a small budget so don't worry you're skilled they want what you got Now this is why I'm showing you drizzling. 
then I'm also showing you how to use this stick. You can use the thin side and you can use the fat side. This helps it and helps you understand the self-leveling of resin. So when it goes like this, it's pulling up the other color. Now if you pour and don't drizzle, you're going to have a fat line on your product and you have to do it over or try to get rid of that dark color. Getting to know the stick. Why don't I use a brush? Because sometimes a brush will blend it. Not only will hairs fall off, it becomes a pain in the butt. So sometimes I use the stick. Knowing it's self-leveling, it's actually going to come back in and then you can see the effect. That's why I like drizzling too. I don't like to just pour on it because when it pours and you got a big fat line like this to hide. So that's why I'm emphasizing uh, drizzling. My fellow designer Tommy Ray, 
pretty bad on that skateboard, ain't he? Anyway, he also does cool concrete with glass, resin, woodwork, great metalwork. I'm lucky to have him. Check out his work. See the concrete and the glass? The resin you're going to learn in the next video coming up shortly. Stay connected to the Design Decaters page and we'll keep you informed. We're not just going to tell you how to make stuff. We're going to show you about the business side and also problems. I definitely make a lot of mistakes, but I'm going to share them with you. I hope you're not too embarrassed if you make a mistake. You just want to keep learning. I'm always going to beat on you about practice, practice, practice.